Does your family ever get exasperated with you for stockpiling such things as paper towels, bottled water, or toilet tissue? Well, they certainly can't object to you stockpiling money. Silver, the only money recognized by the U.S. Constitution. And your first 10-ounce bar of pure silver can be had at spot price with no premium by going to sdbullion.com rp. And when you buy it that way, you'll be supporting reluctant preppers as well by going to sdbullion.com rp. Thanks. This is a quick update to thank you for building our number of patrons to 70 and growing on patreon.com slash reluctant peppers. Soon, when we reach 100 active patrons, we're going to start sending out a one ounce U.S. Silver Eagle each and every month to one active subscriber. So you don't want to miss out on that. Please help us grow by subscribing today at patreon.com slash reluctant peppers. As a responsible person with growing concerns for your privacy and personal liberty, you want to know where we're headed and what you can do about it. We ask the experts what you need to do to take prudent and responsible action to safeguard your family's wealth and well-being and what basic first steps will help you to be aware and prepared. ReluctantPreppers.com Welcome back, Reluctant Preppers. We have a returning guest for the second time tonight. We're going to have Kevin, who is the founder of the widely followed site Survival, Survivalist Boards and the Rural Prepper YouTube channel is visiting us on Reluctant Preppers to talk to us about whether we're going to see a tidal shift in uh, constitutionally guaranteed personal liberties restored to us by the current administration and some moves they're about to make, or whether we're actually about to see, uh, be, partly because of that, a big upturn in resistance and potentially unrest that comes from um, pe concern by forces that are more interested in statism and uh, politically correct uh, advancement of those ideals and not constitutional liberties. So Kevin, thank you so much for joining us here again on Reluctant Preppers. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me. The last time we had you on, we talked about some trends of uh, loss of freedom to pass on wisdom and knowledge and skills to our children and grandchildren. And we entitled that, uh, that video, if people want to go back to it, it says, we're now forbidden to learn what our grandparents knew. And uh, in that regards, uh, kind of bringing it up to the current day, we're looking right now at, because of the uh, recent or announced retirement of a Supreme Court justice, that President Trump is going to have the opportunity to appoint a replacement Supreme Court justice and also that the Trump administration has been announcing that they plan on a wide sweeping uh, bunch of deregulations of getting government out of many aspects of uh, business or other uh, things that they've been involved in. And the question that I'd like to pose to you right off the bat is, do you think either of these opportunities are going to result in the restoration of constitutionally guaranteed liberties that we have lost through the years? Or do you think that, that will, it'll just be uh, more self-serving on the part of the government uh, slash corporate complex and that ordinary individuals will not come out ahead uh, in these changes that we expect to have upcoming? I, I think it's going to be a mixture of both. I think it's going to be a mixture of both. We do need, as much as I don't want to say it, we do need government regulation in some aspects of industry is that studies have shown that there's no lake, no body of water anywhere in the world that is not contaminated with mercury. Mm. In the 1960s, 1970s, companies were widely dumping chemicals. There, there's towns that had to be evacuated because yeah. the ground is so contaminated. Uh, one guy was using some type of waste, chemical waste on roads, and nobody that even knew it was, uh, it was toxic. And the roads to control the dust, this toxic chemical was dumped on the roads to control the dust. And now they had to, the government basically had to buy the whole town and, and move everybody out of it because the and now the town is sealed off, contaminated because they use these chemical waste hmm. to and put hmm. on the roads. So, so yes, I think that some aspects do need a little government regulation. But excessive regulation, such as like firearms, I mean, while we're, the vast majority of our gun laws are from the 1930s, 1934, I believe it, believe it is. It just doesn't, the, the laws need to, a lot of these outdated laws need to go. So, yes, I see some parts of it that we're going to get a slightly left-leaning 
justice out, and maybe we can get a slightly more right-leaning justice in and get some of our rights restored. And uh, in that regards, I mean, what, what particular rights come to mind that you think would be of the most value and the most interest to people who are really a preparedness mindset? Uh, NSA spying, not mostly. There was a recent article that came out, uh, the Patriot Act, and there was a recent article that came out and said that there were cell phone scrapers all over the nation, like one in Dallas, and just scraping cell phone data. Mm -hmm. uh, the NFA having to have a license for a short-barreled rifle, having to have a license for a silencer. It's, it just is like if the government's not spying on you in some way, they're try, trying to tell you what you can and cannot do. I can, what, is, what is it, Colorado people can't even collect rainwater on their property? Yeah, there's some really nutsy things that have been coming out recently, yep. Yes, yes. It's like you own you own property, uh, and and the rain falls on your property, but yet the government owns the rain. I mean, how is how is that even logical? I mean, it, it, it's stuff like that. That uh, laws like that. We should be able to, if if the rain falls on our on our land, by golly, we should be able to at least collect the rainwater. If yeah. somebody wants to <laughs> smoke a little weed in the privacy of their own house and to use the liberals terminology against them hey whatever somebody does and the privacy in their own home is none of the gov government's business on the topic of rainwater that you just mentioned um uh, the viewers on our channel who have seen that we recently published a video called how to stay healthy on vacation um we just came back from a, a trip to bermuda which we had never been to before in our life and i kept asking a, a tour guide that was taking us across the entire island for for a for all day tour i said why are all the roofs they look the same and and they're they look very heavy and and everything she said, yeah, I'm going to tell you about that later. Yeah, I'm going to tell you about that later. And she finally told us that at the very end, they're made of limestone, the same as the walls of all the structures, all the homes and all the businesses are made of limestone, which is the whole, all of Bermuda is the top of a seamount, which is made of uh, coral and limestone. And uh, the, uh, the roofs are made that way because, number one, that's hurricane proof. And number two, they use them as rainwater collectors. There's this, there's this terraced step design of their roofs and they use oh, wow. them to, to capture rainwater and every house has a cistern and their official emergency survival policy when a hurricane comes is everybody hunkers down and shelters in place in their own home and they're expected that their, their home will hold up and they'll have all the water they need uh, to drink because everybody's got that. So it's kind of <laughs> wow. really, really different wow, from... That from is, yeah. <laughs> yes, and then, and then people in Colorado, I think it's Colorado, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, please. That, that, they can't even put a can't even collect the rainwater. They're yeah. totally dependent upon the state for even their drinking water. Yeah, how are supposed to be? How are people supposed to be self reliant if they can't even collect their own drinking water? Exactly the the basic stuff of life. Um, and when the in exact opposite previous vacation that we went on was to Israel and Palestine. When we visited the went across the border, went into Palestine to visit Bethlehem. This was actually the day after Christmas on the 26th of December. And the guy who was taking us around there was telling us about the plight of the people. And he was saying, he said, look, we, all of our power, electric power comes from Israel and they can cut it off at any time. And our water comes from Israel and they can cut it off at any time. He says, and our money, we have no control over that. He says, he says, what kind of a, they say, you know, we're our own state, but what kind of a state are you if you don't have control over your own power and your own water and you can bring it right down to the domestic castle of the household to ask the same question that you are asking is what uh, yes. what kind of sovereignty do you have if somebody can cut off your water then you won't last just a couple of days it is water is the foundation of life we have to have water somebody cut off your water then so, so these my are dog came over Oh, that's great! I was—I uh, interrupted you. You were on—you were on a roll. You were talking about the kinds of uh, rights that you would like to see restored. Uh, the getting rid of the MSA, MS, NSA spying, uh, getting getting rid of the Patriot Act, uh, be, getting rid of the need for license uh, government appeared, uh, approved licenses if you want to buy a short barrel rifle or a silencer, being able to collect rainwater on your own property. For an example, yeah. yes, sir. Anything for, else for come examples, to mind? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, it's national security. Like, let, let's just take for an example. Let's just take for an example of the cur current immigrant crisis of people coming across the border with children. And that if, I mean, how do we even know that those are the child, that person's child? Yeah. 
that if they come across that it could be somebody, the child they could have kidnapped, that somebody could walk across the border. And previously, if they walked across the border with a child, they were free to let go. That right. they come on through, they couldn't detain. And now that President Trump is detaining the children and the parent, mm-hmm. everybody's having a fit. Yeah. Everybody's having a fit. Now, how are we supposed to be a safe nation if we cannot even secure our borders? Yep. That, that uh, I don't know about you, but I, I live in a rural area, but I still lock my door at night. That, that's a, exactly. See, that's the analogy is, is the, the uh, sovereignty of the nation state. You can scale it down to, the again, your domestic castle. And it's like it's no different there. Um, your, your ability to maintain who comes in, who goes out. And the irony we keep hearing about is <laughs> some of these ultra wealthy uh, liberals, I forget if it's Bloomberg or who it is that owns property on, uh, on uh, Maui or whatever, and then wants to build a, a, a walled in uh, private beach and, and really upset that, that they can't, uh, that they're having struggle, struggling to get permission to basically yes. exclude people with their, with their walled off property and guards and everything. So. Yeah. It, it's, it's amazing, the liberal hypocrisy that, hey, that they, oh, I forgot who it was, and I don't want to mention any names. It's one of these far left-wing liberal movie stars, TV stars, and they owned beachfront property and have been fighting to keep people off of the beach in front of her house, which is public property. And it's just like, okay, you want to keep people off the beach so you can enjoy your, your little your view from your house but you want to open the borders and just let anybody in without any background check without knowing who knowing where they're going or what they're doing but it, it just doesn't make any sense it, it the hypocrisy of the liberal left is just amazing just simply amazing we were talking a little bit earlier about how far does that go when uh there's these tensions that form between people who want uh privacy, rights to privacy, right to individual liberty, want constitutionally guaranteed uh, rights to be restored um, versus how threatening that seems to be. And uh, to those who basically want whatever, one world government and borderless borderless uh, countries and, and borderless trade and that sort of thing. Um, you were mentioning to me earlier about uh, this new terminology that's even being brought to bear. I guess we're, we're already being uh, called... Uh, uh, what was it? Deplorables, but beyond that, there's new terminology that's being brought to bear. Are you, uh, the Trump derangement syndrome. Yeah. Okay, that's the people. There's a. There's a. I, I watch some of these liberal left leaning YouTube channels and visit a lot of their sites just to read up on the propaganda. And these people are so deranged by President Trump that there was a there was a guy. I, I forget his name. The DailyMail.co.uk had an article about him, and he was basically calling for or hinting at, implying that maybe the bombings from the early 1970s should come back. And then what's that congressman, that congress lady's uh, name, Waters, mm. talking about how no, no matter yeah. where a, a Trump cabinet member is at, to, to harass them. And then there was the Berkeley sin, the Berkeley violence of conservative speakers being attacked at Berkeley, or mm-hmm. Trump supporters being mm-hmm. attacked at Berkeley, is that the people are so deranged with President Trump and the propaganda that the left is spreading that they are resorting to violence, and it's like, where's the violence going to stop? That now we've got a socialist, well, not we, New York. In the primaries, a, a socialist won the primary. Beat a what was it? A ten term. Um, somebody had been in there for ten terms. Beat him, so now he's out. And after she won, membership of the Democratic Socialist Party is skyrocketing. Hmm. So we've got your young people. And also, if you do a little Google search for young people favor communism. Socialism over capitalism is scary. It is absolutely scary of how many young people are wanting socialism and even communism inside the United States. It's often been on college campuses worldwide where that's been um, a, 
appealing because from a from a purely uh, philosophical standpoint or theoretical standpoint, it can sound so um, um, utopian uh, for people to have you know whatever there's you get whatever you need and you know from each according to their to their yeah. ability and to each according to their needs. So it sounds like there would be elimination of poverty. And in fact, that echoes some of those goals that have recently been uh, much amplified about the. Uh, the plans coming out of the United Nations for uh, policies for, you know, it used to be 2020 and now it's 2030, um, what they're looking to do in terms of promising to e eradicate uh, global poverty and everything like that. So it, it, it can be very um, appealing on the surface, but the promise is always <laughs> through this collectivist yeah, solution. They don't ever that, come through. Well, that's part of it. But they the other part of it is that the idea is that it's going to be a centralized a centralized authority that's going to be handing out and solving these problems for people. So, so yes. that's the old thing about the hand that gives is always above the hand that receives. So you become, uh, you know, uh, paralyzingly dependent, and and and, uh, and you lose your freedom to give up to 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 take these on the dole of this promise of everybody's going to get enough. Yes, there was a there was a lady that was talking some little talk show, and she was debating a fellow Democrat. In the primary, I forget her name. It was just well, it was one of these videos I was watching recently, like this week. And they were, she was talking about how they, she needs to go in there and fight against Trump and address why Trump won the presidency or how he won the presidency. And I'm thinking, and, she, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, so you're going to address free trade or balanced trade? You're mm -hmm. going to address our jobs going to China through North American, I mean, through the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade and China joining the World Trade Organization. So you're going to address all that. No, no, she's not. What she's going to do is she's going to go in there and accuse vote Trumpers, I mean, Trump voters of being racist, of uh, being white supremacist, and that's what they're going to focus on. I mean, how many Democrats, let's say, Take Nancy Pelosi for an example. How many of them have? How many times has she stood up and addressed balanced trade? Mm -hmm. That's what got Trump elected, right? Because he talked about that's that's what got Trump elected because he talked about the issues. He talked about balancing trade with China. He talked. He, he addressed the issues that people wanted to talk about. So, um, the hypocrisy. These people that come in and say, "Well, we need to address why President Trump was elected," in the in the and the uh, the white race the racism and stuff and it's like that that they're they're not even on the same page as the people who voted for Trump and I voted for Trump uh -huh. so I'm speaking from first hand experience yeah right and uh, you mentioned earlier about about this um, permission the self granted permission to use you know I, it's it's one thing if you're going to use say nonviolence to say I'm going to protest by opting out of the system or I'm not, I'm going to refuse to cooperate with this or but it's a very different thing to say we're going to use uh, force and bullying and coercive tactics to jam and to and to even attack and to persecute people who don't agree with us and recently we had uh, was it Sarah Huckabee and her party that she was yeah. with chased chased out of a restaurant yeah. and and not even that but yeah. pursued down to the next restaurant and harassed there as well and yeah. uh, having done no misconduct in that place, not asking them to provide her any any services that they weren't also providing to any other any other client, yeah. but it was her person itself. It was the fact that they associated with her her uh, unacceptable uh, thoughts and actions elsewhere, and saying we won't we won't serve you in this establishment because uh, of of the kind of person you are, not because of anything you're 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 doing here. You're or, doing yes. yeah. Right, and there is, and yes. the, the one distressing thing about that is the analogy, and it's a wrong one. It's 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 actually illogical. The leap that people are making to that, to saying that that's the equivalent of uh, some of these cases like Hobby Lobby and uh, and uh, bakers who said that they won't support uh, certain uh, you know non traditional lifestyle uh, being per yes. asked to participate. And there's 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 a real uh, illogical leap that's made uh, because the in those other cases, whether it's Hobby Lobby. Or whether it's the uh, bakers and photographers and so on who who don't want to participate in um, non-traditional uh, ceremonies, they're they're saying we we are withholding we won't participate in that. Or in the case of Hobby Lobby, so we we won't fund uh, getting uh, you know contraception or abortion, and uh, so it's it's their withholding their participation in something they believe to be wrong. Whereas here, that's not at all what was happening. 
uh, this restaurant was uh, refusing to serve a person which is not asking to participate in anything. Sarah Huckabee wasn't yep. having a let's rip children away from their parents at the border party and we want you to cater that or something like that. Uh, that's yep. not, they weren't being asked to participate. They were just, she was just asking the same service that any other customer uh, would get that's already on the menu, whatever. So it's, it's, not an, it's not an analogy, but that logic gets lost and people just make the emotional leap and then you're done. There was, a, there was an experiment. There was a lady that I've subscribed to on YouTube and she did an experiment her and her boyfriend did an experiment and they took a make America great hat again and um, MAGA hat and wore it around different parts of Los Angeles and whenever he put the hat on there were a couple of guys that confronted him and and wanted to fight him and then but no real violence broke out just a little tussling then they went to another part of LA and this is supposed to be one of the more liberal areas of L.A., a lot of, I'm not going to, but anyway, it's supposed to be a liberal area of, of Los Angeles. She put the hat on and started to walk down the street within about 30 seconds, 20 seconds of her putting the hat on and being filmed of her walking down the street. Somebody came by and threw a drink in her face. A couple of minutes later, somebody knocked her, the hat off her head, and whenever she went to reach for the hat, they stomped on her hand. The person stomped on her hand. So it's that you can't even express a opposing viewpoint without mm -hmm. some people resorting to violence. You know, in this in the United States, we used to have what's called a peaceful transfer of power. So whenever one political party wins, the other one bows out, takes their uh, as a second second in power, second in command, and then there's no disrupting. Right. We let the people speak, we vote in who we want to, mm -hmm. and then there's this peaceful transfer from one party to the other, then you let the other party run things for a little while, and they, people eventually get tired of them, and they're voted out, and the other party's voted back in, but the peaceful transfer of power no longer exists, that it's still, news is still coming out, but it looks like oh, President Obama or the Obama administration was spying on Trump. Mm -hmm. Where's that? It, it, isn't that what Nixon was impeached for? That's what the Watergate scandal was about. Yep. That's what the Watergate scandal was for. Was for the spying. But yet, but yet, we have a an administration that spied on a presidential candidate, and the major media sweeps it under the rug. Mm -hmm. And then you have people obstructing, like you said, uh, Sanders. And then you have the, the, the left that is dragging almost everything President Trump does through the courts. Mm -hmm. So there is no – there is no, the, the, the liberal left, in my opinion, is using the courts. Instead of going through Congress, getting the laws passed, they're just tying Trump up in court until his term is over. And then whenever his term is over, then they successfully obstructed him for however many years. Yeah, and isn't the uh, actually interfering with the operation of a, of a duly elected uh, president and government in their, in their administration, isn't, isn't that, uh, I mean, when you interfere with government, there's got to be a term for it. Is it treason? Is that the right term? Or is it treason? I, I, I honestly do not know. I honestly do not know. But they're using the courts to push a social agenda. They're not, they're not, there's no peaceful transfer of power on, from the left. The left, and whenever the Republicans or the right comes in to power and the voter says, we've had enough of this liberal agenda, we want more conservative values in government, then the left obstructs everything that the people want. And that's, that goes back to the socialism. It, uh, people say they want socialism and then complain when Bernie Sanders was whenever the DNC rigged the election against Bernie Sanders. Right. Is that you can't have, you cannot want socialism and then complain when there are no free and open elections. So, it's, um, I don't know. I don't know. Well, the other point you were making there just a minute ago or a few minutes ago was about the permissiveness of uh, violence 
and uncivil, it was basically shutting down and stifling discourse about things you disagree with. And it's like, that is anathema to the foundation of our, of our country's values, is the ability to, what was it, uh, I, I do not agree with what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. Yes. So that's, yes. that's what we're supposed to be about. What, what this current political mindset reminds me of, what I've read from the history, is whenever the communist revolution came into power, or, or the, yeah, uh, or the, the French Revolution, off with their heads, yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. off with their heads. And who was the, who was the uh, king or the, oh, what was that, the, the emperor of Russia at the time during the communist revolution? Oh, the uh, Tsar? And the Tsar, yeah. the Tsar. And they took the Tsar and his family and all the kids and marched them out in the woods and shot them. Ended his bloodline, ended, ended, the, ended the family, killed mm-hmm. them all, children and everybody. And so there's no tolerance for opposing opinions. Which is ironic that's because that's what, tolerance is the flag, is, is, the, is the rainbow flag though, under which the liberal um, agenda is, is, is cloaked. It says that we're, we're about tolerance and inclusiveness and diversity and everything, but, it's, but there, is no, there is no tolerance for diversity of as thought. As long as you agree with them. As long as you agree with them. I mean, they're tolerant and, as long as... Yeah. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I'm talking over you. No, we're both we're both we're both just emphatically kind of trying to say uh, supportive things. I think you're absolutely that the to- the left is only tolerant to those people who agree with them. How many people? How many women running for president? Oh, what was her name? The the presidential candidate that was running in the Republican primaries. Well, there were there name, were a few. Anyway. There, I mean, we had um, uh, Michelle. Uh, can't think of her name either. But anyway, did the left support the women? No. Yeah. No. No. They didn't. The left, the, the, the liberals didn't support the women because the women were on the Republican ticket, not the Democrat ticket. Right. Yeah, that's true. And it's, it's true for, for uh, people of color as well, too. It's, it's, it's important to be either a female candidate or a, or, a, or a minority candidate, but only if you're going to sign up for the the uh, liberal uh, leftist agenda. If you, if you come out with conservative values, then then no, you, you, you have no right to be there. Yes, right. If you have a conservative values, then you're a racist, a xenophobe, Muslimphobe, or Islamphobe, and your opinion doesn't count. And the next question, if, if it's okay to bring this up, sure. is how far, if now that President Trump is going to elect another Supreme Court justice, if the left already feels this way, and they're already attacking people at Berkeley, harassing Sanders, harassing other other members of Trump's cabinet, how long until the left starts shooting people or bombing? That that's what the the guy this guy wrote an essay and it was featured on talked about on the Daily Mail uk, and he hinted that maybe it's time to bring back the bombings from the early seventies. Then he was talking about how Trump is pushing people with his racism, and it's this leftist propaganda, and people that buy into that propaganda. Like, the, oh, who was it that that used the rifle and shot the Republican baseball players? Oh, what right. Was his name? I don't remember the name, but I. But yeah. you're right. Yeah. Yes, that's a, so. It's so the shootings are already happening. We've already had somebody open fire on a group of. Uh, Republican lawmakers at right. a baseball field. Right, and I, I looked it up while so, we were talking. Michelle Bachman was the name of the presidential candidate in 2012. Okay. You were trying to uh, describe earlier, yep. Or, or 2016. It was, I think, there was one else in 2016. Okay, that was running against Trump for a little while. I think she may have bowed out. But anyway, so no, we've already had shooting. We've already had somebody open fire on Republican lawmakers at a baseball field. And where's the liberal left calling for gun control? It was. They dropped that one real quick. As long as it's shooting, it seemed like after that shooting of the Republican lawmakers, as long as they were uh, were shooting Republican lawmakers, it was never mentioned of any gun control. Shoot anybody else, gun control. That's what it seemed like. Were you thinking of Carly Fiorina earlier? Yes. Yeah. I I recognize that name. Okay. Yeah, so... That's a that's a real serious concern because we the loss of social discourse and and civility 
and basically and, and other people have talked about this is when when the uh, and people have talked about Obama being a student of Saul Alinsky's who is who is a pro uh, activist in, in favor of uh, even violent uh, means to to gain uh, sympathy for your cause back in the back in the early days and when people point out that when your leaders uh, become disobedient uh, then the idea of disobedience um, uh, and misbehavior becomes thinkable in the minds of the common people so now you have a whole generation yeah. growing up um, thinking that that's that's permittable and then you have the major media promoting the anti-conservative anti-right propaganda that they're teaching young people that Trump is a racist and the only reason why he was voted was because the racist voted for him everybody that votes for Trump is a racist so it and the people buy into this that's what's sad that is what's sad people believe the leftist propaganda and, and there's been no transfer, uh, um, peaceful transfer of power with Trump. You've got college students attacking Trump supporters. You've got gangs of people harassing Trump supporters. You've got uh, the lady that wore the hat, Make America Great Hat Again, lost in the liberal area of Los Angeles. Got her ha uh, drink thrown in her face, her hat knocked off, and when she went to pick up her hat, somebody, the guy that was standing there stomped on her hand. Mm -hmm. So as, that's just one example. The shooting of the Republican lawmaker is another example. So when we talked about how we got into this in the first place was talking about uh, changes that you'd like to see in terms of restoration of uh, constitutional liberties um, that, that the new administration is trying to enact. And you, talk, you got into this because you were talking about basically... Um, national security and this is in, yes. a, in a sense ironically in the, in the name of of um trying to <clears throat> try to be open borders and everything people are talking about domestic terrorism coming from the left but or excuse me from the right but it's uh it sounds like quite often there's there's a lot of these uh violent actions and but the permissive the permission of that through the media or through ed education or whatever uh and and liberal media and um entertainment people uh, high profile people endorsing it um, as though it's okay so <clears throat> back if we can bring it back to a, a common theme for homeowners for <clears throat> family heads of families people who are trying to do preparedness and survival preparedness for their families what kind of concerns does this does this bring because people have talked about you know are we gonna have a big financial collapse uh, if so how do you prepare to take provide for your family during that time but maybe what you're describing is it a different kind of a collapse that could happen is basically a, a breakdown of social um, uh, structure and social norms to where it becomes unsafe to just uh, be someone with conservative or constitutional or uh, individual yes. values in this in yes. this society yes yes that that if the left is so I, I, not we can't speak in generalization but some of the people out there on the left, or so far sway. They're swayed so far by the leftist propaganda that they are going to start inflicting violence upon conservative-minded families, conservative-minded people. And we've got um, who was that guy that shot at the the Texas the, the school in Texas? Mm -hmm. And then the NRA instructor and a young man chased him down and shot him. Well, shot him through the back of his car, I believe. I mean, we've got, we can't even go to church. It seems like, and then there was the black, the shooting of the black church mm -hmm. by that deranged individual. It's like people can't even go to church. We can't even vote how we want without some type, without worry of some type of violence being afflicted upon us. Yeah, there's definitely been, and I'm interested in your, your opinion of whether you believe that the the general theme is that, that violence has been increasing in our society. Others say that this is a portrayal of, of that that's been, you know, these school shootings or, or that sort of thing are being uh, touted as or held up as um, reasons for crises that then can cause more state, you know, control to be, to be clamped down on people and that that's not really the voice of the people speaking, that people aren't really acting out in this way. Um, 
but we've had other guests on talking about the increase in in uh, like uh, uh, psychiatric medication, antidepressants, and that sort of thing, really really causing a major impact in in decreasing people's health and safety in in the culture. So interested in your opinion about whether you think that this is all being uh, overblown and actually uh, manufactured crises. Uh, in order to then clamp down with things like the Patriot Act and so on to take away people's liberties, or if you think that that is uh, actually a trend of increased violence in society, and if so, what do you think are the driving factors for that? The driving I, violence has always been part of our part of our society. It's part of our culture. It's part of of who we do. Ever since the first caveman took a rock and cracked another caveman's skull over over a piece of food, I mean, si violence is. We are inherit. We are inherently a violent creature. You don't, you don't. Our ancestors did not chase mastodons and kill wild horses and survive through a through an ice age by being peaceful. That violence has always been part of our society. But as but as we become more domesticated, more civilized, then that. Violence, is, I feel, is slowly fading away. There's, there's no need for violence anymore. And I believe that a lot of it is over, overplayed by the media mm -hmm. that just because somebody takes a gun and shoots somebody else does not mean that all gun owners are violent. Sure. The, mad, the vast, somebody, just because somebody takes an AR-15 and shoots up a school, don't blame the gun. There are how many hundreds of thousands they are 15s in the country and one or a handful are used in a shooting so no i don't i don't think i, I think it's overplayed it's overhyped that one person with our internet that you take one person that's shooting and now all of a sudden it's all over the news we're inundated by it right and what what i think my personal opinion on this my personal opinion on this is that it is a lack of parenting and a lack of socialization that these young people, these young angry men or these young men that go out on shooting sprees like a movie theater in a, mm -hmm. or Colorado or the churches or the schools, mm -hmm. they've uh, been neglected by society. They don't have enough friends. They're not socialized enough. And the experiments say, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just get off the topic here for, for, just for, for just for a minute, and then I'll get back on the topic, okay? You're fine. That there, there's, there's been studies of, like, chimpanzees, and they took these chimpanzee babies away from their mothers and put them where they're isolated. Mm -hmm. The only contact that they had was whenever they were fed, bottle fed. Whenever, that's the only contact they had. Whenever they were reintroduced to the group— Yeah. They were unable to integrate back into the group. Right. They developed social problems. They developed yep. um, violence. And this is seen through a lot of not just people, but a lot of even with elephants. Elephants that raised in captivity and then brought back into the wild do not integrate very well with other groups of elephants. They're violent. They, they're not very well minded. And same thing with people. I mean, we, we have kids today. We put them in a, in a daycare. Mom and dad work all day. Come home, see the kids for 10 or 15 minutes. Did you do your homework? Yes, I did my homework. Take, take your bath, brush your teeth, go to bed. Where's the social interaction? Where's the friends? The homework today is just outrageous. It's that the kids can't even be kids anymore. They go yeah. home. They come home. They do their homework all night till they're, till they're just exhausted. The parents don't have any time for them. Because mom and dad are exhausted from working, and then it's, it's like we're raising these children. That our children are being raised by the internet. Mm -hmm. Our children are being raised by YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. Right. And there, there's the, the the amount of social interaction has been seriously declining since the innovation of the internet and the smartphone. Right. And that's I, I I blame a lot of the violence on our culture on the parents. Take the time to take the kids fishing. Mm -hmm. Don't get them a smartphone. Yeah. Limit their time on the internet. Take them out in the backyard, play some ball with them, mm -hmm. or some baseball or whatever. 
and make sure that they have friends, family time. It's, uh, I mean, how many, it's, it's go and say hi to the neighbors, go and visit the cousins, have a cookout, take the kids fishing, take them camping. Uh, uh, but I think it's the lack of face-to-face interaction that the mom and dad being so exhausted from working all the time, the kids exhausted from from going to school and all the homework, that they, the kids lack that social integration, that, huma- that humanity of just being able to say hello to somebody and smile at them. If anybody wants that, a, that, a, a heartwarming um, reminder of what... Uh, what things are supposed to be like, uh, you can uh, search Royal Knight Father's Day uh, KFC and you'll, uh, you'll see a, a testimonial by a famous baseball player uh, from the Kansas City Royals talking about uh, what his dad meant to him and, and playing, playing catch with him and forming him as a son and having a father he could look up to and having and now him passing that on down to his son and his grandson and so on. So I think that people would like to a good reminder of that. It was uh, several years ago. There was I was out on the Angelina River here near Jasper, Texas. I think it was November, or so I had a little warm front blow in from the south, and temperatures were good. And I was out fishing, going down the river. And there's these public camping sites out there. Well, these camping sites are primitive camping sites. You only get to them by boat. Okay. Only get to them by boat. Well, right there on the river. And as I'm going down the river, there's a boat out towards the middle of the river, and you see a lot of these foam noodles thrown out in the river in texas they're, they're supposed to be white so they're easy to see from easy to see okay as i pass by that i slow down and as i pass by that boat this little this boy he probably couldn't have been eight years old there was a daughter a mom and a husband and the dad all in that boat and they were out there camping on the edge of the on the river and then fishing and he was that little boy was up there in the front of that boat grabbing them noodles out of the out of the river it's like I tell you what, I bet that I hope those kids don't grow up to have any problems because their mom and dad are putting a lot of time into them. Mm. Mm-hmm. And it just it just made my heart feel good to see mom and dad out there taking the kids fishing, taking them camping, just getting back to nature. Well, uh, Kevin, our our time is short, but I wanted to thank you for your visit with us here today. We started out talking about what President Trump and the administration can do for us, and we ended up talking about how within the domestic castle of our home, our own sovereign state of our home, how we can take charge of that and take responsibility as parents and make sure that we build in family time. And uh, that's just scratching the surface, but uh, it's really on on point and just appreciate so much uh, you visiting us here again on Reluctant Preppers. Um, would you be willing to tell people where they can reach you and where they can what they'll find when they uh, reach out to your work online? Well, you, uh, the forum is survivalistboards.com. It's the largest prepping survivalist forum on the Internet. I think over 160,000 members, something like that. Just a couple of million posts on the forum. And then my personal blog is survivalboards.com without the IST. Okay. So Survivalist Boards is the forum, and Survival Boards is my personal blog. And uh, you also have a YouTube channel? Well, Rural Prepper. Rural Prepper. Survivalist Boards, but yes, I was Survivalist Boards, but I changed the name of the YouTube channel because sometimes some people see the word survivalist as being a little taboo. Yeah, sure. And so, yeah. uh, (laughs) Is that what is is your YouTube channel uh, spelling Rural Prepper? Is it all one word or is it two words? Yes, one word. All one word. Okay, cool. YouTube.com forward slash, I think it's C uh-huh. or U, and then forward slash rule prepper. Okay. We'll put a link to that underneath this video. And uh, just thank you so much for joining us here again on Reluctant You're Preppers. Welcome. Thank you for having me.